Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question. This is related to the lymphatic system. So as you recall on test day, there are a handful of questions related to the lymphatic system, somewhere between four and seven questions. Uh, of note, they this is interesting, a few years ago, so 2016's update, 2016-2018, they updated the, well, I guess it was technically 2018. They updated the NPTE content outline and they broke lymphatic system away from the cardiovascular and pulmonary system in order to guarantee a handful of questions on the lymphatic system. So you taking the test as you're listening to this, you will be the beneficiary of that, meaning that you will have a guaranteed uh, somewhere between a range of four to seven questions related to the lymphatic system. So certainly not a huge system on the test. However, it's one of those very vexing categories on the exam because it's something that uh, usually is not on an ultra high priority list, but is certainly important as an entry level PT to have a, a good cursory knowledge of the lymphatic system. Uh, but before we get to that question, just a quick thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thanks for the time you take to spend with me as we go through this podcast. Thank you for the efforts you put into learning and becoming a fabulous PT or PTA. I know that it is a difficult process. I know a lot of you who are listening to this, you're in your final year of school. And so uh, let me tell you, it, it's a pain to be out there working, not just for free, but to be paying to work in your clinicals. It is, I don't know if it's its insult to injury, but it is, it's a big deal to be out there uh, really, really working day in and day out, trying to improve yourself. So I just want to say thanks. Thanks for spending the time with me. Chances are you're listening to this on your commute to your clinical. Uh, drive safely while you're on your way there. But thank you for what you do. And I know that it's going to benefit not just you, but also your clients, your patients, your family for for really years and years and years to come. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. So this question related to the lymphatic system, I'll read it to you, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about it together. Which of the following techniques is most indicated for manual lymphatic drainage, or sorry, which of the following techniques is most indicated for manual lymph drainage in the treatment of lymphedema? So which of the following techniques is most indicated for manual lymph drainage in the treatment of lymphedema? One, considerable pressure avoiding hyperemia. Two, considerable pressure creating hyperemia. hyperemia. Three, light pressure creating hyperemia and four, light pressure avoiding hyperemia. So again, a mix and match question or a mix and match answer options. We've got increased or considerable pressure avoiding or creating hyperemia or light pressure light pressure creating or avoiding hyperemia. So really uh, the question is how much pressure and how much hyperemia should be created as a part of your technique for manual lymph drainage in the treatment of lymphedema? Well, as you recall, when you are performing manual lymph drainage, it is not massage. So it is often described, and I've used that term incorrectly in the past, it's not a massage technique. Massage is, is like, a, if I'm not mistaken, the, it's a Swedish word for kneading. So like, a, like kneading bread dough, effleurage, petri, petrissage. There's, there's a lot of technique in it. And it's typically a very deep technique that works into the subdermal tissues. We're talking muscle and tendon. In this case, manual lymph drainage is extremely light. In fact, the, the textbook describes it as the amount of pressure you would place as you stroke the head of an infant. And so, you know, I've got four kids. And so as I consider what type of pressure uh, I would, <laughs> if I were stroking the head of an infant, that is very light pressure, very, very light pressure. In fact, I would argue it's probably not even enough to blanch the nail bed, although that's a a fair indicator as well. And granted, there will be some variances, variance in patient type. However, generally speaking, your manual lymphatic drainage or manual lymph drainage technique should be of light pressure and avoid what's called hyperemia or acute vasodilation as a result of the pressure. So think of it this way. If you're rubbing very deeply on the skin, chances are you will create acute hyperemia, or typically a redness of the skin or a, a vasodilation occurring superficially as a result of the pressure. Rather, lymph drainage or manual lymph drainage is extremely light and delicate because you don't want to collapse the superficial lymphatic structures. So therefore, your intervention is typically quite light, 
you avoid hyperemia or active vasodilation. Now, chances are if you're doing a deep tissue technique, some type of deep tissue technique or massage, that will result in hyperemia. And so that's pretty much the opposite of what you're trying to do here. Light pressure, avoiding hyperemia or acute vasodilation. This is the target technique for manual lymph drainage. Now of note, manual lymph drainage is a part of your complete decongestive care. So complete decongestive treatment or CDT involves uh, really four main components. You've got manual lymph drainage, you've got compression, you've got exercise, and then you have fastidious skin care, making sure you're taking really good care of the skin and integument as a part of your lymph, uh, as a part of the complete decongestive therapy. So really, those are the four main components. You've got manual lymphatic drainage, manual lymph drainage, compression therapy, integumentary care, or fastidious integumentary care, in addition to exercises or exercising, trying to activate muscle pump or the muscle pump action in order to evacuate the lymphatic or lymphedema, the lymphatic vessels. All right, so there you go. Quick question about the lymph, the treatment of lymphedema and the manual technique. The correct answer again is light pressure, avoiding hyperemia. You would not do what's considered considerable or deep tissue pressure. That would be more indicative of massage or some type of deep tissue mobilization. Rather, manual lymph drain drainage is extremely superficial and extremely light. Again, the textbook uses the anal analogy of stroking the head of an infant. Uh, again, the skin on the head of an infant or, or smoothing or combing the hair on an infant is extremely light. You'll take very good care not to create hyperemia or collapse of any lymphatic structure. All right. Well, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion today. Thanks so much for joining me as we go through this podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out PT Final Exam for all of our courses. Plus, we've got a, a pretty sweet exam simulator. Now, the exam simulator comes with six practice exams. So if you want to have access to that, be sure to jump in and grab that, especially for the summertime. Not just one, not just two, but six practice exams that are included in your exam simulator purchase. Uh, plus, if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a review wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Have a happy and wonderful, productive study time. Study Whether you're going to study or you're going on clinical, whatever it is, take good care of yourself. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Will Crane fist pumps all around. Talk to you soon.